Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial in the Unity Game Mechanics series. Now you may be wondering, what is this series, and why is it called Game Mechanics? Well, this series is part of a, at least, well, continuing series that may go on and off, and it's recreating game mechanics from different games. So in the last tutorial, it was uh, Overwatch's Tracer, she can rewind time, and she can go back in time without making anything else go back in time. And today, we are doing pretty much the same character, Tracer, from Overwatch. But this time, we are blinking. So, blinking forward. And you may be wondering, well, what's so important about blinking forward? That's just like, oh, this dot transform dot position equals this dot transform dot forward times 10 or something dumb like that. Well, actually, no. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But this is what we're going to be doing. So, let's go ahead and click play. And we can look around pretty simply. And if we press shift, we will move forward, we'll teleport forward. Boom, teleport forward, right? Well, that's pretty simple. Well, actually, there's a little bit more to it, because if we teleport forward, usually, if we did what I said we would do earlier, we'd go through this cube. But right now, we don't. And also, as you can see down here, we have an amount so that we can teleport, which is three. And we can teleport, but we will only go to at least ten steps forward, or at least to a object that we hit with a raycast, which I'll explain more in depth later, alright? So let's go ahead and get right into the tutorial. Alright, now that we've opened up a new project in Unity, we can go ahead and start and we're going to start by creating a new C-sharp script called Blink. Alright, so Blink, there we go. And we can open that up in Visual, Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and double click that. And Visual Studio should open up very quickly here. Okay, so it has opened up here. And we can actually go ahead and delete these comments right here. And there's this is a very simple script. Um, very simple. There's only one variable, and that variable is public integer amount. Very simple variable. That's the only variable we need. And you may say, well, why amount? Well, we'll get to that way later, but let's go ahead and start our functions. We're going to start in the update function, and in this update function, we're going to create a raycast. Okay, and you may say, well, why do we even need a raycast? Because we're just moving forward, right? Well, actually, no. If we go into Unity very quickly, and let's, I'll demonstrate this very quickly. We'll create a 3D object, a cube to be exact, and let's create another cube. And move that to the side. Now, if we say this.transform.position.move forward times, let's just say, 10. Alright, so if we did that, then we would move forward by 10, but we would go through any object that's in our way, and we wouldn't stop right when we hit the object. Alright, so basically, if we do what I just said, and do this dot transform dot position equals this dot transform dot position dot forward times 10 or something like that, then we would go right through the object, and we don't want that, so we're going to extend a raycast out, and if it hits the object, then it's going to say, okay, then I'm going to teleport to that position right before that that right before I hit it. So if I do see something in my way, then I'm going to teleport there. But if there's nothing in my way, then I'm going to teleport by 10. So that is why we need a raycast. So if the raycast hits something, then we're going to do something and we're going to teleport to where the raycast hit. And if we do not hit something, then we're going to teleport by 10. All right? So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio back up, and we can go ahead and start with our Raycast. Quick little bit of an update. In after I went from Unity to Visual Studio, after explaining that long explanation of the Raycast and stuff like that, I actually started it in the Start function. So as you can see, this is some of the script here. I act, But anyway, I wrote this script in the Start function, which is kind of not good. So I actually switched that later in the video. Um, I, I talk about it later in the video, and it was an accident, but anyway, just letting you know, do not start in the, uh, start function, start in the update function. So, back to the video. So, we're gonna say vector3, ray, ray, we'll just call it ray for now, equals, 
transform dot transform direction and we'll do transform dot forward there we go so that is what the ray equals so that's the ray a ray cast hit that's very important and then we can start our if statement here and in here we will say we just clicked insert sorry we're gonna say if physics dot ray cast and we'll say this dot transform dot position ray out hit and then 10 so what are we saying here what does that really mean all right this is basically saying from this dot transform dot position we are going to extend a ray we're going to shoot a ray out in the uh in our forward direction and out hit basically that just says if we hit an object then that object will be hit okay so the object that it hits is e going to be equal to hit. And we're not going to extend the raycast out forever. If you wanted to, you just do mathf.infinity. But we're just doing 10, so that's 10 steps forward. So we're going to extend our, our bullet, let's just say, our raycast that you cannot see, 10 steps forward. And if it hits something, then in the, in, in the way, if there's something in the way, then we're going to teleport to that object, or at least a little bit before that object and else do something else down here all right very simple so now in this if statement we're going to say this dot transform dot position is equal to hit dot point minus equals this dot transform dot position dot forward this dot transform dot forward not position dot forward sorry times one there we go. And then we're going to say this dot transform dot position is equal to this dot transform dot forward times 10. So as you can see here, we're going to move forward by 10 and our ray cast goes out by 10. So if our ray cast hit anything, then we're going to teleport to that position. But if it does not hit, hit anything, then we're going to go to that end point, which is 10 steps ahead. Okay, and that is pretty simple, but right now, if we played this in Unity, it would constantly shoot out a raycast, which is not very good, and we ex we go forward forever. So we're basically just going to say, if input dot get key down, left shift, so key code dot left shift, and you can use any of uh, any key if you want to. Left shift is just easiest because in when I play games, I usually usually use the left shift to run. So it's very convenient when I can press left shift and I teleport forward. So kind of like running. All right. So that is a very simple thing right there. And in here we'll also say amount minus equals one. All right. First, we need to say what is amount and why are we using it. So, an, uh, the amount is an integer, and we're basically going, to go, basically going to set that number to the amount of teleports we want to have. So, if we have ten teleports before it runs out, and if it runs out, then are we going to recharge it? All right. So, this is not needed, but I kind of want to implement it in anyway. And this is in the start function. Should be in the update function. Sorry about that. There we go. Update function, not start function, just saying, okay? Now, again, amount. We're basically going to set this to 3, and we'll get 3 teleports forward before it runs out. And then after it runs out, we're going to say start quarantine. And, or not start quarantine, sorry. We're going to create a enumerator called reload. And basically, it's going to reload our amount every four or three, three to four seconds, okay? So it's going to say, okay, if we are low on our amounts, our, on our teleports, then we're going to recharge. So if we are below three, then we want to recharge one, all right, every second. But if we're three, then don't recharge anymore. We just want three. That's our max, okay? So basically, you're going to set this number to three. Just so because just because it is our max number. And I enumerate a reload, and we'll just say yield return new wait for seconds. And we're gonna wait three seconds. Alright. 
or a 3.5, 4, 5, 6, 7, it is, you, you can wait as much as you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, Alright, and in here, we're going to say amount plus equals 1. Pretty simple. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a max to this so that we don't keep recharging it forever. So as long as amount is less than 3, then we can do this. But if it's if it's 3, then don't add any more. Alright? So that is that. And now we're just going to say start coroutine, reload in in the uh, in the coroutine. And we'll also uh, do it in the start function. Right here. Now, in my last tutorial, I created tracers blink, or teleporting back, or rewinding time. And I did that along with this. So basically, I got that inspiration from the game Overwatch um, with, with the character Tracer. And this is also inspired by the game Overwatch blinking forward and back. So that is what this series is called, Game Mechanics, because we are recreating game mechanics from different games, such as Overwatch. Alright, so this is uh, one of the game mechanics in there, and that is teleporting forward along with rewinding time. Okay, so that is the script. That's pretty much it. That's all we need to do for now. We can go into Unity and apply everything. Alright, so let's just see if this works on a cube. All right, delete this cube here, add blink, and we can see if this works just by adding another cube, game object, it's a little bit slow, I wonder why, oh, there we go, game object, move to view, and we'll move it over here, and now, when we press shift, left shift, we'll go forward, and hopefully th this is the direction of forward. If it's not, then we can change the cubes, the cube space and time. Shift, shift, nothing happens. Oh, no, no, something happened. There we go. Okay, something did happen. Let's move the cube this way. All right, so let's see. If the cube is beyond 10 points, so if you don't know what 10 is, 10 is basically 10 of these little grid squares. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spaces forward. So it should stop around right here, okay? So if we play this, and we press shift, we go forward. We press shift again, and as you can see, we stop right before this one. And if we move this one about right here, then we should stop right before it instead of going past it. Shift. As you can see, we stop right before it. Now, just in case you guys are wondering, you can actually do this with a first-person controller. And it's actually really fun because you can um, teleport around. And if you apply this with the Rewind Time script, I recommend you guys going back and watching that. Then you can create a full-blown character. All right? awesome abilities. So we're going to import that package, the character's package, and we're going to import everything but, well, we're going to import only the first-person character controllers and not third-person, the rollerball, or anything like that, just so it's a little bit quicker. All right, is it has imported in. It is very simple. All you need to do is go into the prefabs, grab the FPS controller, pull it in. Maybe we'll scale this plane up, create a couple of obstacles, There we go, create a couple of obstacles. We'll start off on the ground, but we'll go maybe up in the air just to show you guys how cool it is to teleport around from space to space. There we go. And there we go. All right, so we apply this to the for, uh, FPS controller. Oh, that's not the script. Blink, there we go. All right. Really quickly, there is one thing, it's actually vector3.forward, sorry. So that is one thing that is an issue that we just did, so make sure you fix that before playing. Also, you can also say if amount does not equal zero, 
That's also something that's nice to do. Does not equal zero? There we go. It's obviously not mandatory to do it, but it's something nice to do. Does not equal zero. Boom. There we go. Also, really quickly, this is plus equals, not uh, equals. So make sure you change that also before hitting play. Go into Unity, and if we and if we play this now with our awesome FPS controller and gigantic towers, we should be able to see that we teleport forward. Boom, boom, boom. As you can see, our amounts has run out, so we can't do it anymore. We got one. Can't do it anymore. I'm, I'm slamming it. I promise. Press shift again. Boom. There we go. And you may be asking, well, can you do this in the air? Well, actually, yes, you can. It's actually really cool doing this in the air. Oh, we just fell. Move just a bit back. There we go. Right above it. Okay. We press play. We should fall on top of the tower. There we go. And we can look and... Whoop. And as you can see, we can't go through the... Uh, the towers here. Boom. We run into it, but we never go through it. We can even stand right here and we can't even go through it. We just teleport just a tad bit. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.